Skeptical New Testament critics like Bart Ehrman say that we have no idea who wrote Matthew's Gospel. Bart, in his own words, says, Whoever wrote Matthew didn't call it the Gospel according to Matthew. Persons who gave it that title are telling you who, in their opinion, wrote it. Now, the early church fathers all agree that Matthew wrote it, and all the ancient manuscript evidence that we have attributes it to Matthew. We've actually looked at this in previous videos. So, what are the main reasons Ehrman thinks that someone other than Matthew wrote it? Well, the first reason is that Bart thinks there is nothing in the text that would make you believe that the author is talking about himself. He always refers to himself in the third person. Here's what Ehrman has to say, and I quote, Matthew's Gospel is written completely in the third person about what they, Jesus and the disciples, were doing. They're about what we, Jesus and the rest of us, were doing. Even when this gospel narrates the event of Matthew being called to become a disciple, it talks about him, not about me. Read the account for yourself in Matthew 9.9. 9. There's not a thing in the world that would make you suspect that the author is talking about himself. Problem with this complaint is that Augustine answered it nearly 1600 years ago. There was a guy by the name of Faustus the Manichaean who was the first person that we know of questioned the authorship of the gospel, and Augustine wasn't having any of it. Here's what he has to say. Augustine writes, Faustus thinks himself wonderfully clever in proving that Matthew is not the writer of this gospel because when speaking of his own election, he says not he saw me and said to me, follow me, but he saw him and said to him, follow me. This must have been said either in ignorance or from a design to mislead. Faustus can hardly be so ignorant as to have not read or heard that narrators, when speaking of themselves, often use a construction as if speaking of another. It is more probable that Faustus wished to bewilder those more ignorant than himself in hope of getting a hold on not a few unacquainted with these things. It is needless to resort to the other writings to quote examples of this construction from profane authors for the information of our friends and for the refutation of Faustus. Wow, talk about a mic drop moment. Augustine said that he wouldn't point out the profane authors, but I'll give you a few examples. The first century Jewish historian Josephus refers to himself in the third person in his book, The Jewish War. Josephus wrote in one place, however, in this extreme distress, he was not destitute of his usual sagacity, but trusting himself to the providence of God, he put his life into hazard. Then there's the renowned Greek historian Xenophon. Writing around 400 years BC, he writes, there was a man in the army named Xenophon, an Athenian. And we won't even go into all the times that Julius Caesar refers to himself in the third person. He's famous for it. So Augustine is right. This wasn't an uncommon thing at all for ancient writers to do. That's strike one for Bart. So why else is Ehrman doubtful that Matthew wrote a gospel? Bart claims that Matthew was in all likelihood illiterate. On his blog, Ehrman writes, and I quote, the vast majority of Palestinian Jews in this period were illiterate, probably around 97%. The exceptions were urban elites. There is nothing to suggest that Matthew, the tax collector, was an urban elite who was highly educated. Now, I gotta say, I'm a little baffled by Bart here. There's nothing to suggest that Matthew couldn't read or write in Hebrew and Greek. I mean, let's think about this one for just a moment. Matthew was a tax collector. In Galilee of the Gentiles, this might have required the ability to read and write. Now, we know from history that ancient students took notes from their teachers. I'm sure the thought had to occur to the disciples, hey, we might want to write this down. If that's the case, who would they have picked? Let's see, we got fishermen, fishermen, fishermen fisherman, tax collector. In his commentary on Matthew, R.T. France says, the little we know about individuals who made up the original apostolic group indicates that Matthew was better equipped than most of his previous profession for the role of gospel writer. And in his book, Misquoting Jesus, Ehrman himself admits that tax collectors required some reading and writing skills. He writes, Throughout most of antiquity, since most people could not write, there were local readers and writers who hired out their services to people who needed to conduct business that were required written text, including, number one, tax receipts. Plus, we do have many Jewish burial inscriptions from the first century that are written completely in Greek. So the notion that the kind of Greek that we find in the Gospels is foreign to the context of the time of Jesus just isn't historical. This objection, I have to say, is pretty weak sauce, and that's strike two for Bart. Probably one of the better objections against Matthean authorship is Matthew's use of Mark's Gospel. If Matthew's an apostle, why would he use a Gospel written by a non-eyewitness? That does seem to be a bit weird. Well, for starters, there is some scholarly dissent about the popular idea that Mark's gospel came first. Now, it's definitely a minority position, and I don't have a dog in the fight. Let's go ahead and grant that Mark did really come first. There is plenty of historical evidence that suggests that Mark based his gospel on Peter's preaching. If Peter was the Twelve's leader, then there's nothing implausible about Matthew using it as a source. After all, why reinvent the wheel? Also, we have historical examples of eyewitnesses who used testimonies of others when composing ancient biographies. The ancient Greek historian Xenophon was a disciple of Socrates, but he used reports from Hermogenes 
Hermogenes another disciple. The reason was, Xenophon wasn't at the trial and death of Socrates where Hermogenes was. Likewise, Matthew doesn't enter into the picture of his own gospel until chapter 9, and he would have been one of the disciples who fled the scene when the Romans arrested Jesus in Matthew 26. That means there are several chapters of content that he wouldn't be directly present in. It's not like the apostles were witnesses to everything that happened in the life of Jesus, and Matthew still has his own unique content. So that's strike three for the critics. Now, you can argue that Mark is a faulty source, and he makes historical goofs, and Matthew, if he were an eyewitness, should have known better. I don't think that argument works, and we'll dig into those accusations about Mark's gospel in the future, but for now, these three objections against the traditional authorship of Matthew aren't all that compelling. I believe that we're more than justified for believing that Matthew wrote Matthew's gospel. 